uh, and Israeli women, mothers, taking care of their family, especially about health. So, if if I would uh, consider how to use the uh, finance or the budget the best way, is about giving mothers the, the right tools to take care of their families. It's about prevention, it's about how to act right. And then there is the total different world of cure people. Up to now it was preventing, it was about how to act right. So the, the beneficial things will come from there, from the mothers. Taking care of the husbands, cooking right, not too much fat, not to smoke. They shouldn't allow their husband to smoke. So the other thing is how to take care of people and, and cure them. So regarding the unmet needs, what I can see is there is a lack of money in India which can have the support of uh, artificial intelligence that we produce in Israel. In Israel, we work with, uh, let's say, health medical records that collect almost everything. So you can ma have many cuts of this information and have many ideas about new protocols. Uh, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll give it tomorrow, but I'll give you an example. We find that there is a connection between the sight, how people look, uh, see, refractive uh, um, sight, and uh, bones that broken. And we check the computer again, and we find there is a good connection between those who can see well, don't see 2020, and broke their bones. And there is a connection between osteoporosis and sight. So if you ask physicians, what is the connection? He, he said, there is no connection. This is ophthalmology, and this is bones. There is no connection at all. But this was what the computer said about amount of people and collecting this information. So this knowledge came from the computer. What did the computer said that those people who can't see very well are in risk of break bones. So it's a good understanding how computers can help us look from a ways that physicians can't look at that way, because he's an ophthalmologist. What does he know about bones? And if, if a patient now, when he's age 60 and doesn't see so well, so it's better that this ophthalmology would tell his family to take care of him because he might fall and broke his bones. So this is about AI. You don't know where it's going to come from. And we, we have learned that uh, through AI we can save money. How? We know that most of medications or treatments are given for the average person. But as I look at you, you are not average. And she's not average. Everybody of us is, is a very special. So it's might like I give you antibiotics, which do you harm. And we checked that with the treating uh, high blood pressure. And we found out that 40% of the people won't react good to the medication they're going to get. So it's better that we won't let them have any medication. And we find other solutions for them. So we save money for the insurer. We save them side effects and death. And we knew something new, but it was just coming out of AI. So it's about pharmaceuticals. It's about many, many things. So what I can see is when you use uh, knowledge on large scales, it's a lot of money. It's look like India doesn't have money to take care. But in those scales, if you do a small change, you have a lot of money, which you can make it as a budget. Now, the question is, economical question. It's nothing to do with health. It's about how you enroll this money that you save out of innovation and digital health to treat people better, to prevent better. Okay, now about digital health, I have a final sentence for you. It's like, you have to choose if you are going on the train or you're looking at the train or, again, you cut it. Okay. It's whether you are the locomotive that moves things up or you're looking at the train leaving the, uh, the station. This is digital health. So I think India can be the locomotive. <laughs>